What up? What's going on, man? I want to welcome you to the show. We have one of the my favorite actors of all time. I'll say that Omar Benson Miller joining me here on the show. Sports and Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max, Mad Max Radio Live through sixty five iHeart Radio. Omar, how's it going, man? Welcome to the show. Mad Max in the house, man. I'm doing well. Let me know if my uh, my connection is straight because otherwise I need to switch to the fast one. Am I good? You're good. Okay, solid. I You're like perfect. that Dodger. I like that Dodger blue. I had I had to represent it. You know, I'm a Mets fan, but whoever my guest is a fan. You guys of got a squad this year. Yeah, we got a squad. We have a squad. I know your favorite sport is baseball. I know you're a big Dodger Easy. fan. Yep. So that, that's why I had to rock the Dodger gear here tonight. How are you feeling about them Dodgers? I'm sorry we took Max Scherzer from you, but I'm not. Didn't... It's all good. It's all good. You know what? When Max didn't want to throw that that last game, he lost me. But uh, but at the same time, there's no doubt, you know, his dominance is uh, unquestioned. And that your man Cohen that brought the, the Mets, he's ready to go. And you guys are in a position to win. And I'm just happy we got baseball. I feel great about the Dodgers. Uh, and we're going to see who wins this Freddie Freeman sweepstakes. That's going to be interesting, too. I, I, if, I'm telling you, if you guys get Freddie Freeman, I think it's going to come down to the Mets and the Dodgers. You know what? The Dodgers, I, I hate to put it like this, but the Dodgers border on unfair with this. <laughs> like, if they get Freddie Freeman, the lineup is incredibly stacked. I wish we wouldn't have let Corey Seager go, me personally. Um, you know, but it, this is going to be interesting to see. This is why they play. And also, 162 games is a long time. People get hurt. You don't know what can happen in that amount of time. And it usually is an arms race. I like Urias. I like Walker Bueller. I'm happy that we got Kirsch back. So... It'll be interesting to see where it shakes out. We need some bullpen help, though. That's right. I know you grew up originally as a Cardinals fan. You like the Ozzie Smith squad that they had back in the day. <laughs> <What>? I'm, su <laughs> I'm surprised that you don't like the Anaheim Angels because when doing my research, said online that you're from Anaheim. So, you know what? I've never really cared for the Angels, partially because I just didn't like the team. But – you know, my mother is from St. Louis, and that's that's where I got the love for the Cardinals. And then the Cardinals uh, were were all universe, and they had a super diverse team. That was something, especially at the time, not all teams had when I was growing up. And so, it, it's a it's a tricky situation. I'm uh, I was never really hot on the Angels. I went to you know I, I, I was hot cold, but I was never really hot on them. Rod Carew, all time great. I went to school with his uh, with his daughter. She was a really good friend of mine. She passed away from leukemia. Oh no! She, and, and and Mr. Carew was always solid. Whenever he would pick her up or whatever, he was solid. And he's, I mean, it's funny. They never mention him when people talk about the greatest hitters of all time. But he's one of the best. He's a top ten hitter of all time. Absolutely, one of the greatest. And you know, just looking back at all those Angels teams, and then all the way to present day, Mike Trout. People consider him the greatest player in baseball right now. Which is crazy because I don't honestly understand how you could call anybody besides Shohei Otani the greatest player in baseball right now. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can do what he does. And no. I love Trout. I love Trout on a personal level. Mike is cool. He's actually a really cool dude. But but what Shohei does, forget about it. He hits you a 500-foot bomb and then come out and give you seven scoreless with 10 Ks. Real hard to beat. Real hard to beat. That's like Little League stuff. I know baseball is your main passion, but you follow football and basketball? Oh, I, unfortunately, I follow them all. <laughs> <laughs> who, who are your football and basketball teams, for those who don't know? I know I, we know that you're from Anaheim, but do you follow any of the other teams outside of Los Angeles and California? I mean, I follow the leagues in general, but I was, you know, I was a Raider fan growing up, and I've been a Raider fan my whole life. Like Vegas but it's, now. Uh, when they left state, when they crossed state lines, they lost me. So that happened to coincide with the time that I was playing the GM of the Rams on ballers. So, the Rams are my adopted team since they moved back to L.A. Got us a chip last year. I can't front. I did not like how we got that chip because there was some faulty officiating in the last two and a half minutes of that game that I didn't appreciate. But we got the ring. You know, we we, we the Lord of the Rings now. And uh, L.A. is title town. That's right. Maybe I should go move down to L.A. and become a, a Laker fan as well. as the, well, I'll keep with my Mets. Yeah. My Mets are on the right streak. But you know what? Because, the Mets are looking good. But, but I'm a Jet and a Nick fan. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both the teams and my personal sentiment. It's all sorry. Yeah, it's all <laughs> Although I like the Knicks. I can't front. I like the Knicks, but they just they can't put it all together at this point, which is unfortunate. No, but when you have a, a racist owner like Dolan, you know. 
can't get that much star talent in here. You think that's what it is? Yeah, I you think, think people the, don't want to come because of the ownership. I think that's why it's why LeBron didn't want to go here because he had a meeting with them. You think back that's when why Durant had, didn't go? I think Durant didn't want the spotlight because he's a cupcake. I think he really wanted to stay in Brooklyn. I think he Talk wanted to stay. <laughs> but he wasn't in. But but that's what I'm saying. When he when he left Golden State, he could have went to the Knicks. He could have, but and he didn't he, want it because the Knicks. It, there comes a, a certain spotlight when you go to the Knicks. This, no it, question. It, yeah, and so he didn't – I don't think he wanted that, so he wanted to go to the underdog, the redheaded stepchild team in New York, and he went to Brooklyn. And I've never liked oh. KD ever since – I liked him on OKC, then he went to that snake well, – he did that snake move of going to Golden State and leaving Russell on OKC. It was never good with listen, that. I don't know if you saw my segment. I did a segment on uh, Undisputed with Skip and Shannon where I said exactly that, where I, I, was, I was blown away. I mean, he was up three to one, and they lost that series against Golden State, and then he went and joined them. It's a new, it's a new thought pattern. You know, it's, it's a, a new, new world. Thought. It's a whole new world. It is. I want to get into your, your newest project on Apple Plus, Reggie. Yeah, the man. Last, last, last days, days of Ptolemy Gray. Ptolemy Gray, it that's is, right. Uh, I'm very, I'm very, very, very proud of this piece. I'm happy to, that, I, that I'm in it and I'm happy that I'm batting lead off in it and got the, uh, get the show started. There's, it's uh, the six episodes. The first two are available now. They, and the new one comes out every Friday. It's with the great Samuel L. Jackson, uh, uh, a New York native. As a matter of fact, Dominique Fishback is starring in it. Um, we have a wonderful cast, and it's a great storyline about something super important because it, it, the, the story follows a 91-year-old man who's suffering from dementia, and he's watching himself slip from his, his current faculties, slip away from him, and he's watching himself slip out of relevance in society, and it's hard. I play Reggie, the only family member who actually checks up on him. Um, but what I've come to find is the reason Sam, it was, it's based on a book uh, by Walter Mosley, but the reason Sam wanted to get involved and push so hard to get this made is because his mother, his aunt, and I do believe it's his grandfather, all suffered from Alzheimer's. And the the person who directed it had a direct connection. Walter, the the author and the the screenwriter, has a direct connection. There's a real, you know, this is a real epidemic that's happening. And you know, there's that that philosophical quote that you can always tell the the metal of a society based on how they treat the children and their elders. And unfortunately, it's a lot of older folks who are fighting this battle alone. And I think that this piece, if you if you watch it, it's heavy. Um, but if you watch it all the way through, it actually leaves you with a note of hope. But it it speaks to some of what we've lost in the culture about connecting the younger generations with the older generations and the humanity and kindness is necessary to actually navigate it. life. Life is hard. It's, it's not easy. We we really are in the thing together and we need one another. And so it's a this is this is part of that. You read the book in one day, working with Samuel L. Jackson definitely elevated your career in many ways, especially your acting techniques, because you've, you've said it before that working with someone like Samuel L. Jackson could either, either elevate you or can crush you because he is a big presence on the screen. But he was someone that was real professional, prepared. He talked with you without the takes and it elevated you. In what ways did Samuel L. Jackson elevate you? Uh, just what you said, you know, he 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 brings a professionalism to the game that you're going to have to match. And there's an expectation there of preparation, professionalism, and and uh, he's generous in the scenes, whereas he's there to work with you. He's not there to outshine you. He's not there to undercut you. He's there to work with you to tell the story. And he's servicing the story. And he brings his his talent, you know, to that. And for me, I'm somebody who likes pressure. I'm somebody who likes the, 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 the challenge. And I had a great time, man. This was, you know, they always tell you don't meet the people you admire because they're going to let you down. <laughs> this was the exact opposite of that. Because growing up watching Sam in movies for the last, you know, 30 years or so, uh, it, 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 this was what I would hope it would be. It was that he was, Absolutely. he was great, man. And he had, and offset, you know, in between takes, he would lace me up. He would talk to me about, about the game, about acting, about how to further your career and advance on a business level. Uh, you know, tell me stories about the people that I grew up admiring that he worked with on Broadway or off Broadway or in the movies and all that. 
it was all it was a it was an experience top to bottom it wasn't just making a, a tv show amazing we got to touch base on before we get into eight mile and get richard Di- trying a quick segments here You're receiving your naacp award for your role in ballers man yeah how, that how do you reflect I, mean, on I, that I got the nomination that on that i got a nomination for that it was great it just you know that that i've been i've been really blessed because i've been able to portray roles in television and film that I feel like advance the culture and they bring a light to things. And I've I've been in some stuff that has stood the test of time. It's been lasting. People still talk to me about eight mile. People still talk to me about miracle St. Anna and projects that I've been in, you know, 10, 20 years ago. That's that, that's something that I strive for. You know, I want to, I want to represent properly and I'm interested in, in telling stories that actually impact people's lives. So it's been something that when you reflect on, and I don't do a lot of the reflecting because I'm busy trying to continue to move forward. But when you reflect on it, it's something that I'm happy with the way things have turned out and, you know, the the choices that I've made about the roles that I play. Eight Mile, 10 Freaky Girls. Everyone always comes up to you and says that. We know your role. All first. the time. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone and the funny part you. is, is people come up to me and they say it in varying ways. It's never the right way. It's never 10 Freaky Girls. It's always, ah, 10 freaky chicks, Tiki. Oh, you got nine freaky girls. It's like, <laughs> where'd the other one go? It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny how that works. And w- walk me through you getting that role in, in 8 Mile and working with Eminem, especially in that freestyle scene when you're in the crowd. How was that whole experience for you? That was fantastic, man. I mean, I, I got that role. I had just graduated college, and I was sleeping on my mom's floor. San Jose and, University, uh, congratulations. Yeah. On yeah, thank you. Yeah, I just got out of school, sleeping on my mom's floor, and I got the call for the audition and uh, went to the audition, and it was the process because we I auditioned for the whole summer of 2001 um, from, from like June until October. I probably had five auditions, four auditions for it, and a couple times I just thought it went away, and then I got the phone call that uh, they wanted to fly me to Detroit, and this was just after 9-11 that they wanted to fly me to Detroit to meet the director uh, to have an audition. I was like, wow, all right. So it was kind of spooky to get on the plane right then after 9-11. But I went, did that, and got the word that I got the job. And honestly, that that changed my life. And running around, I was just out of school. and And that is the first person of that magnitude of fame that I've ever met. And he was cool. You know, you're running around Detroit, with the, the king of Detroit and that was an awesome experience in and of itself that was my first winter I'm from California man my, that was my first uh real winter it was ice cold out there and you know we have memories everybody I was just looking at some of the tapes I used to walk around with, like how people have their their camera on their phone I used to walk around with a little mini DV camera I was watching some of the tapes the other day of us all on set and you see how many people were there that aren't with us anymore you know we had a lot of tragedy it struck after that film with Brittany Murphy passing away and Proof passing away and D'Angelo Wilson passing away and it was just a just a lot it was a lot and so it's a it's a life-changing experience I tell people that all the time that movie directly changed my life changed the trajectory of my life star-studded cast Mackay Pfeiffer's in it Anthony Mackie yeah yeah we had a lot of people man Evan Jones Eugene Bird. You know, you have Kim Basinger, who is obviously a giant, uh, and nobody was more popular in the world than than Marshall at that time. Uh, and then you look at, I mean, Michael Shannon. There's a bunch of people who, if you if you go back over that film, those people now are still the people. You know, that was like an introduction to a younger class, the next generation of of talent. Just magic made out of that film. Lose Yourself came out of that film as well. Just magic made. Magic made it, and you're one of the products of it for sure. Oh man, and that's what I mean. It's a blessing to be a part yeah. of that. Carl, get Richard Die trying. Did did Eminem or someone from that cast put in a good word for you for this film, or this was just oh a straight yeah? Up audition? Well, they were they were producing. No, they offered me the film. Basically, they were producing that, and my was my character was so well received from from Eight Mile that then when it came to dealing with Fifty, I spoke with Jim Sheridan, the director of the movie, and it it, it fell into place. You know, and you know, man, I'm not surprised, but like this, I'm not surprised whatsoever about 50 and his success with power and all the power franchise and whatnot now, because he's been a hustler. 
And that dude is is smarter than people think he is. And he allows people to underestimate him with a lot of his, his antics. But he's, uh, he's sharp as the tack. And that was another great experience. Man, another great learning experience. I try to take all these experiences and learn something when I'm on set. You know, I've been all around the world on the studios dying. And that's a that's that's crazy. You learn so much about life and people and the culture traveling. And 50 Cent story was interesting because when you got into the car with him and you thought it was it was like some type of FBI car with the lights on it by Yankee Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, we got we were shooting right across from Yankee Stadium, as a matter of fact. And uh, and <laughs> and another cat who who actually is another cat that got introduced from that film to the American audiences named Ashley Walters. He was a, he's a, a a rapper in the UK. Now everybody knows him from Top Boy. Um, and he had just bought a watch from Jacob the Jeweler, and it was he and I hit me that morning in the hotel. He's like, "Yo." You want to come with me, brother? Come on, let's go get this watch. I was like, all right. So we walked. We had time. We didn't go to work till afternoon because we were shooting nights. And then we buy the watch. And he spent big money on the watch. Then we got to the set. And he was wearing the watch. And he was showing 50. He's like, yo, look at my watch, bro. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, how much did you pay for that? And he told him, he said, no, 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 no. Come on, man, let's go. So me, him, and Ashley jumped in his car in his Suburban with the flashing FBI lights, moving people all out the way, all the way down the mid town where jacob proceeded to give him a watch and triple the value because 50 told him that, that yo man how, how you can do it my cousin man that's my cousin my cousin here get a watch you give me this cheap bullshit it was hilarious it was hilarious what was the last time that you spoke with 50 because i'm gonna wrap the question into this the next one that i have here because did he if you have spoke to him recently was there any reach out for him getting you in power no, I haven't spoken with him in a while. Matter of fact, last time I saw him was at an airport. <laughs> we both find different, different uh, exotic locations. Um, no, I haven't spoken with him about power, but he started power. Power and balls were on simultaneously, so there was no time. You know, but some other cats from the show are doing, like uh, Russell Hornsby, my buddy Russell Hornsby, who was in Get Rich or Die Trying, is in, he plays the father on BMF now. Mm. So 50's the kind of dude that'll run your back, man. He'll keep, he keep your bank account right. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm sure if I somehow or another I end up low on work, he'll be there to scoop me up. Fingers crossed, man. I'm hoping it pans out. But <laughs> as we move along here, I want to cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You used to sing this theme song on the way to school. Is that right? Man, unreal. Yeah, on the bus on the way to school. I loved it. And then I got to be a part of it. We got a movie coming out. As a matter of fact, in uh, I think October, October, September, we got a movie coming out on Netflix: The Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We made it during the pandemic. It's a lot of fun. I think the kids will really feel it. CSI Miami, that's another role that people know you for. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a lot. It's been, it's been a lot. I've been blessed. It's been a lot of work. I got to put in a lot of work. What was your most challenging role throughout your whole career, if you look back on your entire filmography? Uh, easily Sam trained for Miracle St. Anna with Spike Lee. Easily. Because I had to lose 80 pounds to get in the movie. So if you look at me in the the right before I made that movie, I made a film called The Express, and you can see the difference in my size. And I had to do that over a summer, and it was rough. <laughs> that was rough. But then another example where it changed my life because that then in turn opened me up to to European travel. We shot the film in Italy, and in the uh, and in the Bahamas, and in New Orleans, and in New York. So it it opened me up to more exposure internationally, which has worked out in the future. So I always big up Spike for giving me that opportunity and believing that I was going to drop the pounds <laughs> because if I didn't, it wasn't going to work. <laughs> I did read about that online that about the criticisms and just how you were treated because of your weight. And you think that's why you didn't get some certain roles in Hollywood, but it's something that was important that I did read about you in regards to that statement was that you never let that bother you because you always had high confidence Oh, yeah. It's something that you roll well, with. That's also, also, I roll with faith. So, you know, what's supposed to be for me is for me. Whether Absolutely. I don't care if I weigh 800 pounds, if I weigh, you know, 80 pounds. This is this is the, the faith walk that I'm on. So, you know, this this game is a marathon and not a sprint. And so far, I'm, I'm 20 years into it and I'm still ticking. You used to listen to Prince when you were younger. You were in your own band. Is that right? No. No, I, band. I wish I had a band. You crazy? <laughs> I read something online about that. I was like, was oh, man, a band? Don't, 
trust me, the, the good 70% of the stuff that's online about me is off. But yeah, I know. I know. I, mean, I read somewhere that you were a Yankee fan. I was like, that's not it because on the old. I, I, I can't front though. I did. I did love. I did love. I love Derek Jeter is the person who brought me back to baseball and that Yankee team. So that may have been true because at that time, I had abandoned baseball probably from like '96 to 2001, and Jeter and his passion and that group, that core four group, actually made me fall back in love with the game. So that one might be accurate. But I did not have a band. <laughs> I've never. <laughs> I've never had my own band. I wish I did. Oh man! <laughs> that was the things that I've done. That's not one of them. <laughs> oh man! You gotta be yeah, crazy. Yeah. Also, I'm not related to Forrest Whitaker, which people always want to yeah, say. Yeah, I don't know why they say that. I mean, it's just uh, people are <laughs> saying the things that they put on there. It's insane how journalists even have jobs out here. But some of the things that they well, say. There's not a, there's not a lot of fact checking that has to take place on the internet. It's a whole new. It's a wild wild west. It's a wild yeah. wild web. Yeah. Well, the, the, you know? welcome to my world as me. I went to school to be a journalism and communications and everyone now oh, wow. calls themselves to be journalists. And, you know, I take pride yeah. in my work and do a lot of research and I I'm one of those that. fact checkers. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So what else you got, man? I got to jump. I'm doing press. Yeah, man, for sure. It's been, uh, it's been nonstop. Yeah. Ozone. We're going to touch on ozone. Ozone. Man. Yeah, man. It's an unfair and partial sport. We're on a hiatus right now because I've been working uh, on my on cameras, the on scripted stuff, but we're about to come back. You know, we primarily cover boxing and baseball and it is the intersection of sports and life. We talk completely opinionated, non-sponsored stuff. So you will hear the real when it comes to us. And it's a conference, it's a conversation between brothers, actual brothers. So basically this is like a, like we turn the microphone on in the living room to our conversations and the, the audience gets to be privy to it. And we also have a lot of our friends come on from, various walks of life from you know world champion boxers to to actors to artists you know the whole song and dance and good time mm -hmm. it, who's someone that you want on your show that you haven't had on yet as a big guest wow i mean that, that list is pretty long we haven't had everybody on the show <laughs> but <laughs> uh you know who i would love to have on the show i would actually love to have mookie Betts on the show love to have mookie on the show because I I don't want to get him in trouble, but Mookie's really humble, and man, Mookie's the best in the biz, and he he gets glossed over a lot for the accolades that he brings. There's a reason that he's you know two time champ. He ain't no joke, no, at all. We saw what really. he did with Boston, and we saw what oh my he did in LA. <laughs> oh my goodness, the championships just keep following this guy. It's not an accident. Uh, <laughs> they, don't, they don't come accidentally. No, no. You have yeah, two man. important historical figures behind you and a Muhammad Ali picture and then Trayvon Martin, who yeah. serves as, you know, a martyr, unfortunately, and just yeah. spreading awareness about the racism that we go through in America in relation to sports. Do you think Colin Kaepernick will be given a spot in the NFL again? Because we've been seeing the offseason news out here, him throwing the Tyler Lockett. And now that Russell Wilson's off the Seahawks, you think there's an opportunity up there? What's your take and opinion on that? I don't think they're gonna give him a shot. I, not that he doesn't deserve a shot. I was oh, yeah, he Super deserves Bowl one. When he, I, I was at the Super Bowl when he was one pass away from beating the Ravens for the for the for the Super Bowl. Um, but I think that they have martyred him in a way for the movement that I, I think that even though they've acknowledged their wrong doing, I don't think they'll fix it in that way. And I think that's the product of. Uh, that's that's the evidence of showing how far we have to go in general as far as just the this, this struggle for fairness you know and thank god you know Colin Kaepernick is doing all kind of great stuff and his influence he's a prime example of letting his light shine his influence off the field has gone so much farther than it ever went on the field and you know living a life of faith you have to wonder about your own purpose and I wonder about him if he looks at it and he says, wow, this was this was my purpose. Obviously, he's a fantastic athlete and he looks like he's still in great shape and he could sling that thing, especially with all the bums you see in the NFL now. It's Patrick. So it's, 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 I, didn't say, I didn't say no names. You said that. <laughs> but, but, but <laughs> I'm a lot fine of bums with that. In the NFL. And so and so with that, you know, I don't personally believe they'll give him a shot. I hope they do, though. I really hope they do. And a real shot, not not some token shot. You know what I mean? A real, a real opportunity. That one pass away from winning the Super Bowl. Do you think if he makes that pass and catches the, and it, he scores that touchdown, it, it's, does that change the outcome of Colin Kaepernick being? I wonder. Elite? I wonder, because the truth of the matter is, 
winning covers a multitude of sins in the United States and in the world. I mean, the, the Americans love a winner. And that that usually can supersede a lot of other feelings that they may have. So I wonder, but then you also have to wonder if he makes that pass, the, does he ever go down the trajectory of then being a backup and starting the protest? And ultimately a super effective protest because prior to Kaepernick taking the knee, there was not a lot of conversation about police brutality towards communities of color, you know? So this is, it's effective. And, and what he had to sacrifice was his career. What he has, though, is a voice. And he has multiple careers now. I mean, he's making television shows. He's making documentaries. You know, he's, he's, he's actually spending his money. His, his, his money is where his mouth is. He spends his money helping, helping build communities, so on and so forth. So it'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out. To just spiral everything in full circle here with your entire accolades and career, you were you used to memorize certain movie roles when you were younger. Do you think that's the call for actors? Just when you're able to memorize the lines of a movie, do you think that's your calling for some people as far as an actor goes and being able to recite and act out the movie roles of something that you watch on TV? No, I think it can help, but it's not. You know, so it, acting as a craft is so much more than just knowing the line. The lines are just a conduit to get to the emotional uh, uh, crux of what it is that you're saying with words and oftentimes what you're saying without words. For me, I just had a memory where I could remember songs and movies and all this and other when I was a kid. It definitely helps me, but it's not it, it's not a prerequisite at all. I think just being informed it will help you more. And also you're observing and duplicating life. So being a student of life and, and observing things and whatnot, that, that this will this will service you a lot better watching people and being able to duplicate that behavior, you know, easy really. does it in the chronic to your favorite hip hop albums from the West coast. I know that did my research on that. <laughs> easy. That's not even in question. I mean, I, I got a handful more, but those ones are easy. That's, does that's it. an easy call. Easy, easy does, does it. it. Easy does it. Anything else, man, yeah. that we didn't cover here. We, we covered your, your newest no, project. Man, on you, Apple you Plus. got it. You got it top to bottom. <laughs> you, you covered me. <laughs> You know it all. I think I left my social security number at the door. <laughs> oh, <laughs> DJ man. Mad Max, man. Thank you for having me. I'm glad we were able to set it up. For sure, man. Anytime that you're doing press, you know, let's keep in touch here. You're always welcome on the show. You always have a spot here. Anytime you have press or need anything, man, you're more than welcome. Awesome. I see you out there at City Field. That's a fact, man. Thanks again. Let them, actually, let them know where they can find you on Instagram and Twitter and all that, too. We want to plug you in. It's me. It's just at Omar Miller. I'm Omar everywhere. Miller. There you, you go, me. everywhere. Ozone Podcast and all that. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your night, Omar Miller. I appreciate you, man. All right, now. Later. Later, man.